hello everyone welcome back to the channel today i'll be checking out this video that says could you travel from russia to the us on foot um guys this is something i've always um, thought about because i've seen it on the map it's very very close it's, very, it's almost like i don't know i don't know whether there's a bridge somewhere there i don't know maybe there's some kind of some kind of a joining between those two countries you know but um let me see what this video has to say about that because i've always thought about it like maybe if they could put a bridge there or something though that is probably not never going to happen due to the relations between the u.s and russia you know two enemies um cold enemies not hot enemies because it's kind of a cold war most of the time um if you haven't already please help me out hit that subscribe button I really appreciate you. You'll be doing me a huge favor. Without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. If you have ever been to Russia, you have probably been left with the feeling that there is much more left to discover. With over 6.6 .6 million square miles of total land mass, which makes up one tenth of all the land. Very large, very, this very, very large. Is arguably the biggest in the whole world. It's such a large country that the next biggest country, Canada, is only 3.8 million square miles, about half the size of Russia. It's even bigger than Incredible. planet Pluto, whose surface area is only 16.7 million square kilometers compared to Russia's 17 million. Furthermore, Russia spans 11 time zones across two continents, Europe and Asia, and has shores Guys, imagine this. Oceans. This is even after, after all the whole, like, if, you want, if that means you want to add, like, make it like the soviet union despite all those countries living in the soviet union just imagine that this despite all that it's still it's still this big incredible how, i wonder how they were able to amass this kind of land like when did it happen what did what time did it happen i would like to know that i don't know whether there's any video for me to watch that could um, depict that but it's something i've always like how do these countries come about amassing this kind of large lands like large surface area of um, countries like this how is it possible credible spans 11 time zones across two continents europe and asia and has shores on three oceans the atlantic pacific and arctic ocean the size of russia makes it an excellent place for travelers because that means there is plenty for them to explore from imposing modern cities to numerous natural and protected areas including 48 national parks, simply everything in Russia is amazing. And almost 28% of the land is still waiting to be discovered. Damn. Although the largest country, Russia has good traveling connections with the rest of Asia, Europe, and the world, considering there are more than 200 airports in the country. Wow, okay. So if you live in the United States, I mean, the way they talk about Russia, the world and would like to travel, the way people talk about Russia sometimes, like it's some kind of uh, backward country or something. I mean, 200 airports that is a lot. That is real, that is a lot. Real is really plenty, is enough. I mean, people, I know their, their GDP is not high from what I've seen, but I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't think Russia should still be messed with. I, I just how that is just why I see few. To Russia, the obvious method would be to board a plane. But would you believe me if I told you there's another possible way of going there? And when I say another way, I don't mean by a train or a ship, I mean on foot. Huh. That's right, although not easily, you can actually walk from the United States all the way to Russia. Uh -huh. This is made possible due to the fact that despite being in different continents, Russia and the United States are just 55 miles apart at their nearest points. 90 kilometers. These points Only. are located between the Chukotka Peninsula in Russia and the Sura Peninsula no bridge in the US state of Alaska. These two peninsulas are separated by a stretch of water known as the Bering Strait, which is approximately 53 miles wide at its narrowest with an average depth of 30 to 50 meters. The Bering Strait links the Arctic Ocean with the Bering Sea and separates the continents of Asia and North America at their closest points. It is believed that there was a land bridge across the Bering Strait which existed due to the sea level falling several hundred feet. This land bridge is believed to have joined northeastern Asia to northwestern North America at various times during the Pleistocene Ice Ages and allowed the crossing of man and mammal from Asia to the North American continent. 
On the Bering Strait there lie two small islands known as Big Diomed and Little Diomed, which are 2.5 miles apart at the narrowest distance. Mm -hmm. Little Diomed Island is located about 16 miles west from the mainland Alaska and has a total area of 2.8 square miles. On the other hand, Big Diomed Island is located about 28 miles southeast of the peninsula and is Russia's easternmost point with a total area of 4 square miles. Even though Big Diomed and Little Diomed Islands are just over 2 miles apart, they've been part of different empires and different hemispheres for over 150 years. Interestingly, Big Diomed is owned by Russia, while Little Diomed is owned by the United States. Wow, <laughs> that's funny. In 1867, the United <laughs> States really bought Alaska from Russia. The treaty used the two little islands as a benchmark to draw the border between the two countries. This international mm. border dividing the islands in the two countries is also the international date line. The Little Diomed Island is only 0.4 miles from this line, while the Big Diomed is about 0.81 miles from it. Big Diomed is 21 hours ahead of Little Diomed, so a two-mile kayak ride between the islands is literally a trip back in time. As such, the two islands are often called the wow. Tomorrow Island and the Yesterday Isle. Okay, that is interesting. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying to travel from this... <laughs> okay, they're in different time zones. Wow, that is... That is fascinating, man. That is really fascinating. Jeez. Guys. This... I mean... I mean... The earth is just so incredible, man. Just so incredible. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> they're just, let me say, total of basically, barely like two, let me say, two kilometers maximum between each other and uh, 21 hours ahead or behind of each other. That is, that is incredible. So I could, I could, I, I could be in the day in this site. Then if I, if I if I if I take a boat and go to the um, to the other side, I will be in the night. What? <laughs> that is incredible, guys. Guys, what do you think? That is that is that is mad. That is really mad, man. Wow. Okay, nice. Okay, I love that. Yomed. So a two-mile kayak ride between the islands is literally a trip back in time. As such, the two islands are often called the Tomorrow Island and the Yesterday Isle. Okay. The Diomed Islands are often blanketed by persistent fog, which makes visibility very difficult. On a clear day, however, a person standing at sea level can see a little less than three miles across the ocean. You can see even farther if you go higher. The highest altitude on Little Diomed is about 1,600 feet. On this point, you can see for about 37 miles across the ocean. And since Big Diomed is on the other side of the international date line, you can technically see into the future from Little Diomed. <laughs> the Bering Strait wow, is extremely is remote and sparsely populated. This is partly guys. Different. I don't know. I don't know if if it's ever going to be possible in my life. I would like to visit places like this. I would like to visit places like like this before I die. Seriously, I can't just be in this world and be in one country. I mean, just stay in one country from birth until death. That that seems that seems really depressing, man. <sighs> wow, this is not this is incredible. Like, wow, I'm really really guys. You don't know how fascinated I I, I I am about this thing. I'm so I'm so fascinated. I can't believe this. <sighs> it's always nice to learn, man. It's always nice. Due to the freezing low temperatures and unfavorable climate around the area. However, on the western shore of the little Diomed Island lies the village of Diomed. This village is inhabited by an Inupiat Eskimo population of 170 people, hmm. who live in huts clustered up the steep and rocky hillside. It has a school and a local store, and wow. is one of the most remote and isolated settlements in the U.S. But unlike Alaska's neighboring little Diomed Island, Big Diomed has no permanent native population. Hmm. After World War II, the native population that once settled there were forced off the island and onto the mainland of Russia in order to avoid contacts across the border. Today, it is the site of a Russian weather station and a few military installations with some Russian soldiers. As you can see, there is a water body between Alaska and Russia, which makes it seemingly impossible to mm -hmm. cross from one country to the other. I would like to know how that is going to be possible now. However, in the middle of winter, 
The region is subject to severe storms and an ice bridge forms on the Bering Strait from coast to coast. Oh, okay. So, technically, you could walk from the US to Russia on this seasonal ice. The narrowest distance between mainland Russia and mainland <laughs> Guys, Alaska... I would actually be afraid of walking on that ice. What if the ice breaks as I'm in the middle of it? I'm always thinking of this kind of uh, doomsday situations all the time. Like, I, I can be walking and walking and walking and I just go and plant my foot in one place and another bust open. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that, that is fucking scary. <laughs> that is really, really scary. <laughs> wow. No, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I thought there was some kind of road. But if it starts ice, mm -mm. no, no. -uh. It is I'm approximately 55 miles. Considering that the walking speed of most people is 3 to 4 miles per hour, it will take at least 10 hours to walk across the two main lands without stopping for any breaks. However, this can vary based on many factors including your fitness level, overall health, and age. Additionally, many obstacles along the way such as bad weather could potentially make the trip much much longer than expected. But despite the fact that a person could potentially cross from the USA to Russia, many hurdles restrict traffic across this body of water. First of all, the freezing of the Bering Strait can happen only several days during a year, mm -hmm. with see? strong ice and a calm and clear weather. You see what because I'm saying? Of this, one has to plan very well in order to catch the yeah. very right moment to embark yes. on such a journey. <laughs> the ice structure changes very quickly and completely unpredictably, mm -hmm. so there's no guarantee anyway. Mm -hmm. Additionally, That's what I was saying. a strong current which flows north through the strait, which usually creates large channels of open water. On occasion, these open channels become clogged with moving chunks of pan ice. And even though it is theoretically possible to jump from chunk to chunk, you would still have to do some swimming across the open leads in the icy water. And even for an Olympic swimmer, cold water swimming can be extremely dangerous. Any temperature below 21 degrees Celsius is considered potentially dangerous for swimming as it could lead to hypothermia. So, swimming in the Bering Strait is not something to leap into without preparation. No, no, no. Luck is also required I can't even having swim. favorable currents. Attempting to walk in 60 to 70 miles per hour winds is dangerous, and there is a high risk of being blown over and suffering injury. The Big Diomed and Little Diomed Islands can be used as a resting point during the crossing of the Bering Strait. However, being in the proximity of Russia's Big Diomed Island will reduce the chance of a successful crossing from Alaska to Russia. It is unlikely permission will be obtained from the Russian government to cross the Bering Strait, which means a successful crossing involves keeping a low profile. This comes as no surprise considering the hostility between the United States mm -hmm. and Russia, and the fact that there are no official immigration offices to check you in or out of the countries. So if you would try to walk, kayak, or swim across the Bering Strait as soon as you would be on the other side, you would be arrested and deported from the country you just arrived at. Russia is known to patrol its borders with dogs, and I don't think you would want to meet them after a 55-mile <laughs> swim. But just because it's illegal to cross the water doesn't mean nobody has ever done it. There are actually two reported cases of humans walking from Alaska to Russia in modern history. The first is of Russian Arctic explorer and mathematician Dmitry Shupero who attempted to cross the Bering Strait on skis in the company of his two sons. The expedition failed when overnight, the coastal ice had carried the sleeping adventurers 16 miles away into the open Bering Sea. Hmm. Shupero, conceding defeat, set off the rescue beacon and awaited rescue. The group was feared lost until they were finally spotted and rescued by helicopters That's which scary, took man. them back home. In 1997 a second attempt failed when Nikita, the oldest of Shupero's children, fell through the weak ice and sustained severe frost. See what I'm saying. In 1998, in the course of the third attempt, Dmitri and Matvey Shupero managed to successfully cross the Bering Strait, becoming the first people to do so by skis, and thus securing another spot in the Guinness World Records. The second attempt is of British mm. adventurer Carl Bushby, who is still attempting to walk an unbroken path around the world, from southernmost Chile, up the Pacific coast of the Americas, across the Bering Sea and then across Eurasia all the way to England. In March 2006, he and his fellow adventurer Dmitry Kiefer walked from Alaska to Russia over the Bering Strait in 14 days. When they arrived, they were immediately detained and deported from Russia. <laughs> you can read more about it in his book called Giant Steps. Oh, that is fun. The idea of building a bridge or tunnel across the Bering Strait has been proposed a number of times since its first ah, mention at the end of the It's not happening anytime soon with these people Advocates fighting the all the time. Are seeking funding to study the feasibility of what they term the world link. 
which would unite four of the world's six continents. A Bering Strait bridge would provide an overland connection linking Asia, Africa, and Europe, with North America and South America. Wow, that would be nice. The Bering Strait could be spanned by a series of three bridges via the Diomed Islands for a total distance of about 85 kilometers. But despite these proposals, neither the USA or Russia has ever attempted to build a bridge connecting It's not happening continents. anytime soon. This is probably because building one would cost up to $100 billion and the Jeez. two countries aren't particularly friendly with each other. A project like this would need both parties to collaborate intensively. And maybe the idea that you can travel from Russia to Alaska without having to step into an airplane is something not everyone is excited about. Besides, the fact that there would be a bridge wouldn't mean that anyone would drive over it. The closest roads on the American side are 520 miles long, <laughs> and for a good wow. reason, the snow and ice covering the infrastructure during winter would destroy most of it. Okay. So, in conclusion, can you walk from USA to Alaska? Yes, you could. It's been done in the past and it'll probably be done in the future. But should you? Not the very best of ideas, particularly with the recently reported unusually warm Arctic winters. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That is scary. Imagine being on that ice. Wow, guys. I mean, I actually thought that there was some kind of um, uh, revolutionary stuff. Um, like maybe some kind of a road or something. But at the end of the day, it seems like it's not really something that can really be done like that. I mean, by, by the average person. It's something that is it's almost like an, an adventure kind of thing. So, and obviously, the, the easy thing to do would just be to put a, a, a road there. But what is the point of that? I mean, how many people are living around that area in both countries, both US and Russia? How many, uh, how many people are living in, in that area? Really none. So, who, how many people are actually going to drive to try? Except, except they put the bridge to the points where it's closest to the, to the main roads in each of the sides, each of the countries, which I don't really think that is necessary. So um and of course us and russia are always fighting for some reason so it's never going to happen but that was that was always it's, it's an interesting thought it's an interesting thought and it's something i've always um thought thought about like i mean is that possible because i i, I see it in the map very close so um anyway guys um i really enjoyed that i hope you did as well please leave a like on your way out it really helps me out thank you for watching i'll see you on the next one Peace.